Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. I decided to make a series of videos about the data we capture when we go running. And today's video, I'm gonna look at this, well this, the Stride foot pot. In last week's video, which I linked here, uh, I looked at the Under Armour hover shoe and connecting it to map my run. Now I ran with the shoe on its own, I ran with the shoe with a watch and ran with the shoe with the iPhone. And you get different data sets depending on the combination of equipment you bring with you. At a minimum on its own, you get the distance, you get the time, you get uh, calories, you'll get ground contact time, you'll get cadence. And from my point of view, the really interesting one is foot strike angle. Now, when you add the iPhone, you also get a map, which I suppose you all want to map, but if you know where you run, maybe you don't need it. Uh, so you get a map and you get elevation, elevation data. And again, the run I was going was flat, so I, maybe I didn't need that either. Uh, and then when you add the watch, you get heart rate. Uh, but you may want more data than that. And for that reason, I'm gonna look at the Stride foot pod. My Under Armour Hover Phantom is a great shoe. Uh, I've got three pairs of them and I've done a uh, huge amount of, of, of distance in them. Uh, but it could be that you wanna run in a different type of shoe and you want data from that. So if you want to do that, having something that captures data as you change shoes is very useful. And in my instance, it's a Stride foot pod. Now this is a very simple little device. It clips onto the toe of your shoe. So it's, a, it's pretty small. Uh, it's very lightweight. I think it's about six grams. And it uses this, this little clip uh, to clip into the shoe. So you stick that in under the laces uh, and then you literally just hook it in at the back, push it down, it should snap and it should snap into place. So that's it securely snapped into place. Now, on one occasion, I've run with this for months now. On one occasion, I somehow, it fell off. I think I kicked it. Uh, it wasn't insecurely. But one of the things that I always do is I use the, the, the foot piece comes in orange and it comes in black. The unit is black. These are obviously, uh, these bedlam shoes are black. So what I like to do is put it on, the, on, on a shoe on an orange piece and then if it were to fall off, I'll spot it straight away. Of course, you can see that from the data because your data trail will stop and you know, and that's how you pretty much could find it. But it's an expensive piece to lose, so making sure it's clipped in before you run is essential. Much like the Under Armour Hover, the initial data set from the uh, Stride can be got by just going out and run on your own, in which case you get the basic data without the map, and then you add the iPhone and you'll get, a, you'll get the map, and you add the, the watch and you get heart rate. Uh, it doesn't do foot strike angle and presume that's because depending where you put this on the shoe, it would have different uh, metrics. So, so in that instance, the Under Armour Hover has an advantage, but this has a whole range of data that we'll have a, an initial look at uh, that the Under Armour Hover can't capture. The Stride Foot Pod measures running power. So that's simply the amount of energy you're putting out. So in short sprints and say uphill sprints, you're capable of putting out much more power than you would over the length of a long marathon. And so Stride looks at this data, captures how much your power is on different runs, and it tries to analyze it. And what we'll do is we'll have a dive into it on the, the watch, we'll have a look at it on the phone, which is here somewhere, and we'll have a look on the computer, just to see the initial data set. Uh, so this won't be a deep dive, but it gives a good overview as to how Stride works. One of the things I really like about Stride is its interface. I think on the, on the watch, this is an Apple watch, uh, on, its, on the iPhone and also on the computer, it looks great. And for me, uh, with the bad eyesight, uh, I needed something on my watch that was very easy to look at. And that, strangely, was the primary reason I bought uh, the Stride. It wasn't to analyze all the data. Uh, that's sort of coming next, but it was really so I could see what was going on. I had been using uh, Map My Run, and Map My Run uh, on the watch will actually give you uh, sound alerts. Uh, but I was, I was running a half marathon, and people around me were getting pretty annoyed at my watch telling everybody about the pace, etc., etc. Particularly as it seemed to be slightly off. Uh, so uh, handily, if I ran away from people, then to try and avoid that. Uh, but using the uh, the Stride was something I bought to have a look at what it would look like. And so initially you get a little screen and I'm gonna take screen grabs as we go along, uh, which gives you uh, some data on, on running. Uh, so you've got a couple of options when you start. So uh, you can run or work out. So I'm just gonna go running. So we go running, connects, tells you to get ready, and then it starts. So it's, it's still time to get ready, probably because I'm indoors, but we're ready to go and so it, tells me to start and away we go. Now you can pause and you can do various other bits and pieces. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can set up auto pause uh, so, so it stops every time you stop at a traffic light 
you can st set up auto start so it starts every time you decide to start um, and you can customize all the screens so typically you can pick whether you want one data set two data sets or three data sets and you can i think have three screens and on those uh, screens you can pick what data so you might want power you might want pace you want my heart rate and then you can pick the averaging so you can pick whether you want uh, the current pace you're doing or an average pace uh, and it's all very good and very easy to read and unusually for for something like this it also has a colorblind mode which uh, one of my students study, studying color blindness and gaming gaming uh, platforms so this is pretty useful for him I guess uh, and it's very customizable very easy to use when you use the phone and in, in honesty I don't use it on the phone without the watch so I don't usually start from the phone uh, but the phone the interface is very nice uh, it's very clean and you can get a lot of data on the watch uh, it will do a lot of text and you can scroll up and down through loads and loads and loads of text um, and the watch has the disadvantage the, uh, one disadvantage I have with the Apple watch again is trying to press stop and start start is okay uh, but stop is very finicky particularly if your hands are wet but that aside it works really well and there are a new set of training plans on stride which i will come into probably in a second video because it's it's too long and too complicated but we'll have a look at the phone first and see what we can see in terms of the data set so this is the interface as you first open it up on the top right hand side there is a little little button i'll push it there and you can sync stride so when you run without the phone or run, run without the watch you press that button and it'll it'll sync up uh, and then you can have the training and this is based on a, on a calendar uh, and so that's one week I could go 12 week, 12 weeks I could go a year um, so it'll give you an idea of your running stress or you can pick distance or you can pick use a whole load of metrics you can pick elevation or we could pick let's see how many runs I did this year with stride uh, so you know it'll, it'll give you a number sort of 40 a 40 a month kind of thing that it seems to be looking at um, and then as you go down you can get uh, different summaries uh, but this one is interesting running stress balance uh, so this is there's a sort of sliding scale between what's good what's bad uh, but I'm currently into performance uh, balance uh, you can set an upcoming event which I did for the marathon uh, which is very good and then you get sort of uh, feedback along the way the power duration curve and the critical power we'll have a look at that in relation to what you can see on the web because there's much more data available there uh, there's also a calendar function so this is telling me today I'm going to be running a particular because I'm on a training plan this is day 11 of this stride training plan and there's various settings okay so let's have a look at what we can see on the computer so this is our interface and up at the top left hand side this profile but there is the critical power now based on a number of runs uh, stride work out a figure called the critical power and based on the critical power everything else will follow the critical power will be different for each individual and depending on how well you're running your critical power might go up your critical power might go down mine at the moment says it's 261 watts or 3.58 watts per kilogram and it last updated on September the 9th so it, it does update on a fairly regular basis as you go through training but then what you'll see uh, to the right hand side then are power zones and so in my easy zone I should be running 65 to 80 percent of my critical power and then there are five zones easy moderate threshold interval and repetition and so uh, repetition the hardest would be 300 watts plus and again when you're running you can see the data on your phone so you can actually see live how much power you're putting out and it's very useful as a training guide on the right hand side then there are links to to recent training runs uh, and then there's a running stress balance which is similar to the thing I showed you on the, the phone uh, I won't pretend I'm an expert in all of this data uh, but this tells you how well you're doing in relation to your uh, critical power and your stress and all these various things the one down the here is 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 much more easy to understand so it's my training okay so this is over a period of time and again you can the last 90 days is there but you could you could select a different data set uh, you could pick running stress uh, you can pick moving time they'd be related because you know the longer distances I guess there's more stress so the big tall skyscraper over on the right is the marathon again if you went to distance you'll see the same thing and you'll see the same thing well you won't see the same thing in elevation because uh, on the earlier training runs I was going on more elevation than in the final run but it's actually very useful and you can pick pick the different dates etc etc but this uh, long graph is the basis that I think of everything that stride does so it's the power duration curve now on the left hand side there are watts and the right hand side does distance as expressed in time so this is three hours uh, so 
I'm capable of, on moderate hill repeats, I did 605 watts. So that's where you're really going for a short period of time. And if I go over to the right-hand side, I should get to the, my marathon somewhere over here. Uh, so hard long run on the 8th of October, 228 watts. Not enough watts, to be honest. Um, but there's a sliding scale between between uh, the the distance and, and, and the effort you're putting out uh, compared to the longer longer distances and, and less effort. And that's a very useful curve to, to look at. There's also an auto model curve. So this is what is predicted you should do. And uh, I'm lagging behind somewhere in here and here, which which my understanding is, is to be expected because it's a model curve, it's the ideal. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm not running to the ideal. Uh, over here is interesting. Uh, so for some of my age, and, and I'm 57 at the moment, uh, I'm putting out 3.58 watts per kilogram, uh, whereas as the normal person of my age is 3.59, so very close. My muscle power, I seem to have a lot more muscle power, 7.93 versus 5.27. I seem to have better resistance to fatigue, uh, 332, 31 to one hour and three. I'm not sure how this data is ca calculated. And then endurance. I seem to have much more endurance than the average. I mean, when I look at those numbers, it tells me I'm lazy. <laughs> it tells me I'm lazy in training, that I should be doing better. That's kind of what it's telling me. I might be reading it wrong, but that's what it's telling me. Uh, and then if you go over here and you click on calendar, uh, it'll give me, when it scrolls through, give me a series of runs. So I'll just go through a couple, couple of the runs and we'll, 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 we'll pick, pick one and have a look. I already had a look and I'll show that the marathon review, there's some of it there. Stride measures power. And the theory of that is you're running a hilly course and you're, let's say, running to pace. So you're looking at your pace and therefore, uh, when you go up the hill, you're putting a lot of effort in. And when you go down the hill, you're putting uh, not a lot of effort in for the same uh, pace. Uh, and what stride tries to do is put the same effort in going up the hill as going down the hill. So when you go up the hill, you'll naturally run slower, but to the same power output, and you go downhill faster uh, to the same power output. And overall, going by power should be better than going by pace. Now, if you use a lot of judgment, you could probably do either. In my recent experience in the marathon was, I got confused between the two. I wasn't sure it was running for pace or for power. In the end, I made a Ah, I made a mess of it. Um, so be it. Makes for more interesting videos. Uh, but we'll have a quick look on the computer and see what I mean by that. We'll have a look at the data on my recent uh, long run, uh, the marathon. So, uh, which is uh, a not very smiley face, I think is the emoji I put in. But I did it just over four hours and you can see where it all goes pear-shaped. So towards the end of the run, you can see sort of pace is dropping down. But this is the data set for the entire run and you can analyze it as, you, as I move across and you'll see it's the little uh, cursor is moving on the map, um, but it's, it's just giving me power, pace and elevation just in those. But I could turn off elevation, I could turn off pace and I could just look at the power. So I started with quite a lot of power, 230. I had been trying to run at 235, but I got confused and then I'm up to 256. And if we go all the way bottom down across here, I'm 218. And then I'm back to 197 when it's all gone pear-shaped. Um, but ultimately, um, I can measure my power output. Now I could measure that against pace. It wouldn't be too dissimilar. Uh, and, and the same would be true of probably cadence and a few other things. But if I actually look at the two things I find interesting, one is elevation. So you can see the course here. I think all these peaks should theoretically be level, but one way or another, you can see there's peaks and troughs on this run. Uh, and then if I was to map that against, uh, if, if I look at power, uh, you'll see, actually you'll see nothing particularly useful. Um, so we'll, we won't map that against power. What I want to look at there is, is I'm gonna scan down to these statistics down below. So if I look and just pick a particular distance or data set, I'll go down to where it's 5%. So here on the back stretch, you can see I'm going uphill and 5% of my power is also going into uh, the wind. So the wind was against me going on the uphill uh, and that was uh, not ideal. Um, you can pick data sets down here. You can, I can drag this cursor along uh, or I can move this across. There's a whole load of rich data that you can get out of Stride. The question is, how useful is this data? So on the day, I didn't quite get its usefulness correct. I got confused between running for power and running for pace. And uh, so now I've decided to uh, start a training program to get better at using strides. This is only an introduction video. And many of you will know more about stride than I do. And uh, feel free to pop 
questions and things in the in the in the description, and we can debate them um, and uh, see how much better it can get. Now, Stride have recently introduced some training plans, and I'm going to do a video about that, and I'm going to do a series of videos about uh, trying to ultimately. Uh, break this four hour barrier that I should easily be capable of doing if I wasn't so uh, lazy in my opinion. Uh, but we're going to try and do some of those those videos. So what I'll do is uh, it, if you want to keep watching them, if you subscribe there, I think the blue button should pop up somehow. And then uh, the linked videos to earlier and later ones I'll put, pop here. And then hopefully you won't miss anything. And uh, it could be a bit of fun, but actually putting comments in is really interesting because we can debate the various things. And stride is really complicated and I'm not pretending I'm an expert, but I'm getting better at it. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.